GE vs Siemens. America vs Germany. This is the $100 billion digital transformation battle. What's going on guys, JP here with another Biz Rich video. Today we are talking about GE and Siemens and both of Today we are talking about GE and Siemens digital transformation strategies and how they implemented IIoT, artificial intelligence, and machine learning to drive new and significant business growth. They each had a different approach in both the definition of their strategy and the implementation. There are many different ways to pursuing growth and developing a business strategy, so this might help you define the path you would like to take with your business. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is JP. I am an MBA and MS candidate with business growth and development experience. So as part of my graduate coursework, I had to analyze GE's and Siemens digital strategies and I figured, why not make a video about it? Because I found the information very interesting and felt it could help others with their business strategy. The bulk of the information I am going over today is from two different cases, one from Harvard Business School and the other from the International Institute for Management Development. First, I'd like to give a little bit of context for both the companies. Siemens and GE are similar in that they both have consumer product lines such as appliances as well as B2B and industrial offerings like jet engines and information technology solutions for businesses. Around 2014, both these companies were experiencing slow or no growth and therefore they needed to seek out new opportunities for new growth. For GE, they had a service segment to their business where they sold a product to a company and made money off a long-term service agreement. Well, with the increased ability for companies to service their own equipment and with many of these service agreements expiring soon, GE needed to innovate. They saw the future in Industrial Internet of Things, or IIoT. And if you're not aware, IoT is simply connecting objects to the internet to either increase their capabilities or somehow provide added value. For GE, who provided industrial equipment to companies, IIoT meant enabling their products to be able to capture and share real-time data, which in turn would be ran through data analytics software to help improve efficiency and overall optimize the operations surrounding that piece of equipment. This related to their service business because the new IoT-enabled equipment could better predict and recommend servicing. All the data is also processed with machine learning and artificial intelligence, therefore constantly improving overall efficiency. This new IoT equipment could save companies significant amounts of money since the system could detect the need for servicing and eliminate unneeded servicing or part replacement, as well as run the piece of equipment in the most efficient manner possible. As put by Beth Comstock, GE's chief marketing officer at the time, Pursuit of digitalization was the way to combat GE becoming a commoditized hardware company. Now, let's talk about Siemens. Like GE, Siemens was looking for new growth. They were able to reverse their downward profitability trend in 2014, but Siemens' goal was to create a foundation for long-term development with their new Vision 2020 strategy, where they aim to realize substantial growth and close the gap between them and their competition. The Vision 2020 strategy was ultimately a digitalization initiative. Digitalization was seen as the future. Roland Bush, the chief strategy officer at the time, anticipated a second IT revolution and pushed for change within Siemens so that they could capitalize on this new growth. They had been offering IT solutions, but they wanted to move from horizontal IT to vertical IT, which focused on software that helped companies with their core processes. Siemens was so committed to weaving digitalization within the DNA of their company that they got rid of a 4.5 5 billion euro business Siemens information systems because it didn't align with their new strategy. Well, they kind of got rid of it. They sold it to ATOS for $1.1 billion and remained a strategic shareholder by retaining 15% of the company. Now that we have some context, let's talk about how each company pursued industrial internet of things. Both companies had a very different approach to their new offerings, and I believe it is important for you to really think about how each of these strategies could apply to you and your business. So let's start with Siemens. 
As mentioned earlier, Siemens was looking to help businesses with their core processes through software. To properly develop software solutions for companies in this manner, they needed to have a great deal of domain-specific expertise in each vertical. One example the case study mentions is a software system for analyzing liquid flows in pipelines, which required knowledge of fluid dynamics. As noted in the case, only companies like Siemens with heritage and accumulated expertise in that domain would be successful. So basically, Siemens was pursuing highly tailored solutions for each company's specific use case. They had each business unit developing solutions within a specific vertical, which was then added to a core platform. This is in contrast to GE, who was pursuing IIoT from a primarily platform strategy, meaning their offering was the actual platform, which purchasing companies or outside developers could create their own specific applications on. Basically, while Siemens was developing unique solutions for all of their customers, GE was focusing on one product that enabled others to develop specific solutions on. Obviously, there can be many benefits to this platform and open source strategy. You can focus all your resources on perfecting that single offering. You have the benefit of outside resources, such as other people's time and money, as well as access to talent outside of your organization. As mentioned in the case, the new goal was to transform GE into an analytics-focused company that leveraged IIoT. And that is exactly what they did. They had their developers create a data analytics product. GE management knew that focusing their IoT efforts on solutions only applicable to their own products was a defensive strategy. They knew they needed to develop a product that helped customers on all machines. GE also realized that the value of IIoT was not just in specific apps, but in creating an ecosystem. They had hired engineers from Microsoft who were pushing them to pursue a Windows type strategy. And GE did. As mentioned in the case, GE built the world's first industrial strength platform to enable developers to create apps that will deliver more value and superior outcomes for GE and their customers. The platform, which is called Predix, would enable the company to become an orchestrator of apps not just built by GE, but with open source for other developers and equipment manufacturers. So as of today, there are a little more similarities between the two companies. Siemens has established strategic partnerships with developers and outside companies to provide more solutions to their customers. One core product of Siemens is their product as a service offering called MindSphere, which seems similar to GE's Predix in that it is an IoT platform that a company or a third party can develop apps specific to their needs. Siemens is also driving significant revenues through their digital factories offering, where they create a digital twin of a product, process, or plant, and test various activities and the activities implications within the software. You can see the enormous value that testing changes prior to investing the money can do not only for upfront costs, but also for finding the most efficient solution. Information from other articles suggests that this segment of Siemens is performing extremely well and is a point of excellence and differentiation for them. I wanted to find revenue data for the actual IoT segments of Siemens and GE, but with both these companies being very large and having consolidated financials, as well as overlapping business divisions, it was difficult to determine what revenues were actually due to the digitalization efforts of each company. From what I can tell, GE's revenues from GE Digital are $4 billion in 2018, and Siemens Digital Industries segment had revenues of 15.3 billion euros in 2019. So while both companies pursued industrial Internet of Things, machine learning, and artificial intelligence, they both did it in their own way. I will definitely make sure to do a full video on this whole idea of platform strategy versus product strategy because it can be seen in many different areas, one example being Apple and Microsoft. But I think it is a really important concept or idea for people developing their own business to think about. Two different approaches, two different business strategies. Let me know in the comments which strategy you think is best and why. And if you made it this far in the video, congratulations on getting some MBA knowledge up in your brain. Clearly you are committed to your business and success. 
Give this video a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe and tap the notification bell so you don't miss the next upload. Also, let me know what business or money-making topic you would like to know more about in the comments, and thanks for watching.